I believe that seating charts are very important in order to keep your classroom organized and I am definitely an advocate of assigned seating for students so that they are responsible for their own area. Um, I have less problems with students being social um, or being off task when I have a seating chart and I've tried without but I find this is also more helpful and it helps me learn their names much more quickly. So I've set this up so it mimics my classroom. I'm sitting right now at my demo table and I have my workspaces around this table. Now when I'm actually populating my seating chart, um, if you're in a high school setting like I am right now, I try and divide up my freshmen and sophomores and put um, my senior students at each of those tables because they actually help monitor for me because they don't play around with the childishness of some of the ninth grade shenanigans. So we've got ninth grade, ninth grade, 11th grade, and 10th grade. And I always put the grade next to the student's name uh, so that I know if I have a 10th grade assembly that these students will be gone and I don't have to worry about that for uh, attendance. The other thing that I do is I underline the number if the student has a 504 or an IEP. So none of my students will understand why it's underlined, so we protect my students' privacy, but I also make sure that these students who are underlined are closest to where I normally sit, so I can kind of keep an eye on them and keep tabs, and I know, okay, these are the tables I need to more frequently check in on. The only exception is over here for Frida, a ninth grade student with an underline. She would be coming with an aide, and I put them closest to the door because Frida might need to exit with her wheelchair for medical reasons, so I give quicker access for that particular student. You'll also know that um, I have some students with parentheses under their name because this is the name they want to be called, and this might be the legal name that I have in their documents. So I try and honor that for my students um, so that they can feel respected. I'll put quotes around a name if it's Edward, but they want to be called Ed, so I know um, you know that. And maybe somebody has a name that I'm mispronouncing. So I see that as Janice, but maybe they prefer it to be Janice. So I would go ahead and put a pronunciation underneath it. That helps me kind of learn their names more quickly. The other reason for having a chart is let's say that P Peter likes to take advantage of the bathroom. I can put a little sticky note underneath this uh, that says no bathroom passes and then remove it after we have uh, shown that we can then handle it. So on top of this, I always put a piece of plastic and this is so that I can write on top of my uh, chart. So let's say that Jill is um, absent for attendance. So I put a one instead of an A because who knows, maybe Jill may roll in uh, a half an hour late and I can change the one to a T for tardy and I can designate that as tardy unexcused or tardy excused. Um, the other thing I like this for is if I'm doing a quick check on some writing, maybe students have to do a sketch before they move on to um, you know, an actual project, I can go around and look over their shoulder and put a check here that lets me know uh, that they've done it. Or maybe we were doing video notes, a check would mean that they got 100, and maybe a student only did half of the notes, so they would get a 50. This way I can enter these grades, enter these uh, notations later on when I have a free moment during the class or even after the class has been dismissed. I can also make marks on here for students who have uh, given me an answer to something and I want to try and make sure that everyone has done it. So as they do answer something, then I'll know who has not yet. So I find it helpful in that way as well. The last way that I use this is for assessing um, bonus points. I have a little rule in my classroom that when students volunteer information that's helpful to what's going on, like let's say we do our art quotes on Monday, um, I want students to share what their thoughts are about the quote. Well, then I will remove this and let's say that 
Um, Adam does uh, volunteer information, and I'll put a little mark there, and if he does it again, maybe the next week, I'll put another one, and I'll keep making tick marks. Um, and I let my students know they can earn up to 40 points that can be added on to a final exam or a final project um, that I have in the year. Um, they do not get points if I call on them. They get points for volunteering, and this way I have less trouble with students like not wanting to participate. So these are voluntary participation points and I just keep it on there. And if let's say a student, you know, would like five more points on a quiz so that they can get that 90, I'll erase these, add the five points on, and then they can, you know, earn those points. So it's one way to kind of recognize students who are helping out and actively participating. I hope you found this helpful. It's been helpful for me. I've been using this for the last 15 years in my classroom. Um, and you can go ahead and subscribe because I have a lot more information on my channel that you might find helpful. Thanks so much.